one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to All Things Nakab, the podcast, where we cover all everything. <laughs> <laughs> I am the founder of All Things Nakab, and I'm also your host. And with me are my co hosts, Karisha. Hello, and Nadia. Hey. Hello. Hey, Nadia. And today we have a special guest, one of the founders of All Things Nakab, one of our admins. There's four of them. Um, and this is Introduce Yourself. I am Taisha Asia Ayed Hamu. I prefer to be called Asia. Asia. There we go. See, I have to let everybody introduce themselves with their Muslim names because, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, alhamdulillah, there's two things that we want to accomplish today. The first things first is the story and accomplishments of all things Nakab. We have been around since 2014. 2014 and we've done so much so i want to make sure that everybody catches up to what we have done and our plans on what we're doing in the future and the importance of muslim and the next one we want to talk about is the importance of muslim sisters in the media despite the backlash so on our board of All Things Nakab Incorporated, we have um, myself, we have Asia, we have Nuseba, Tuscany, and Nora, and they we are all over the world. So that is one part where we are actually doing the work of supporting, encouraging, um, and providing aid to sisters within the UMA. And then now we have a culmination of all of our works together put into this podcast. And Karisha and Nadia have joined us. And we are so excited to bring this to you. So first, let's talk to Asia and yeah. tell us about what um, your experience with all things Nakab and the things that we've done so far. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum. Um, with all things Nakab, what brought me to all things Nakab was my curiosity about it. I am a Nakabi, but at this current time, with at work and stuff like that, with the mask, um, I've been gravitating towards the masks. But we're able to wear the Nakabs. Um, I just haven't found one that I'm comfortable with at work just yet just to get that out of the way. Um, we cover almost everything. So believe yeah. <laughs> me, we have sisters in hijab. We have sisters that are not hijabis. We have sisters that are not even Muslims that are in our group that come for support. So it's okay. Yes. And, I, and that's what I enjoy about all things the cop. It's really, um, I know she said accomplishments. I really don't see them as accomplishments. I just see them as being a good Muslima. Um, I basically, I've been a Muslim every, I've been a practicing Muslim. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. I took my Shahada at the age of 23, but I did not become a practicing Muslim until the age of 44. Mm -hmm. um, I still felt like that, I can do it on my own and I'm going to do take my own path. It wasn't until uh, life events and life itself. And some people may say, you know, they may feel a little leery about this, but I truly feel like um, Allah spoke with, spoke with me mm -hmm. um, on two occasions. Uh, on 9-11, <clears throat> The day before 9-11, I had surgery, which was supposed to be an outpatient surgery. I wound up waking up about or becoming coherent like a week and a half later. Mm. And uh, the day before that was 9-11. Um, so that's when my first interaction with 
hearing someone that was not in the room with me said it's time to get right. It's it's time to, you know, it's it's time to get right. It's time to come to me. And I excuse me, but I was in the bathroom and I looked out because it was it appeared to be a male voice to me. And um would it be in a male voice? I'm busting open the door like who's in this room with me? So I still didn't pay it any mind. I'm still living my life doing this, doing that. Uh, something else happened. Something else transpired in my life. And it was said to me again. And uh, still didn't pay attention. Then I lost my foster son. And I knew that my mind state was in trouble. And who else to hold on to but the rope of Allah? I went this time because it could have been very detrimental if I didn't for my life and maybe other people's lives. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. And in my search for becoming a good practicing Muslim, I gravitated towards the niqab because I wanted to focus on Allah. I want to feel him as much as I could and become as intimate with him as I could. And I had to teach myself and I'm still basically teaching myself. I'm learning every day as if, you know, just like everybody else, this is a never ending book. You read it to begin, but you never end just to start all over again. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So it's a never ending book. And since I did find a love for the niqab, and how it made me feel, I, I ran into all things macabre. And um, it was different. It was welcoming. I felt mm-hmm. a sense of sisterhood. I felt like, wow, she really texted, talking about Miss Aisha here. <laughs> she really, I said, wow, she really texted me. So, you know, she got back with me and I saw the activity that was going on and I loved it. I loved it so much. And I'm glad that she saw that in me and invited me as a, a, a admin. And just a sidebar, I didn't even know this lady and I went all the way to Tokyo with her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They said, we well, met where are one you? time. We met one yes, time for 30 one time in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. The yes, Philadelphia the Phil- you. Yep. Yes. You had now to go to, to Tokyo work. Tokyo together. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. She had to go. She had to go to work. So she couldn't stay there long. And yep. the next time I talked to her, um, it was on, I mean, we talked before we left, yes. but it was a Saturday, I think. And we were like, Hey, let's go somewhere. And, then, and we were like, well, when you want to go Tuesday. Okay. Where are we going to go? We had to go through a list of places, <laughs> and <get> a visa. <laughs> so, we told yes. you to check out like the directions, the language. We didn't, we yes. on the plane on that Tuesday, <laughs> ah, oh my. we met each other, I think in Texas. Dallas. In yeah, Dallas. Dallas, Fort Worth. Yes. And, and we that was got it. on the plane together and went all the way to Tokyo. I think we stayed there 10 days together. It was the best trip of my life. Yes. No, I know her from no. a can of paint, girl. No. <laughs> <laughs> But it was so funny because the time that I was able to spend with her at the Philadelphia Chat and Chew, she had said something and I turned my head. I said, oh, that's my sister right there. (laughs) I said, that's her. And I knew, you know, because you got to fill people out. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, you really have to fill people out and make sure that they're as genuine as they're appearing to be. And she said something, and I said, that's my sister right there. I got her. I, got I have her. no filter. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I said, I can definitely. I the fact that you bond together. I think yes. that's what it is. Like, you guys clicked because you had the yes. love for him. You also had the love for the Nikal. I was like, oh, let's go on a trip together. Okay. We're going to be doing yes. it together. That's it's right. Like that deepness, that deep, deep connection that. Blood. And I think that's why Rasulullah always said that, you know, Muslims, 
brothers and sisters is closer to you than your siblings and your blood because yes. there is that bond. Mm -hmm. Yes. You yes. order that exactly. amazing. And, and yes, but it, that was, was. The, actually the reason for the chat and choose because many of mm. our sisters are in areas where they're the only Muslim or yes. they're not supported in wearing niqab or hijab or being Muslim. And yeah, I yeah. just thought that we needed to come together and support each other. Okay. So mm -hmm. we, we've done the chat and choose so that, and we're going to continue doing that. Um, COVID has got in the way of that, but it's okay. Um, we've done the chat and choose. We've provided financial assistance to sisters and their families. We've provided mm -hmm. shelter for sisters that were in trouble. Um, we've provided, we've gotten people married. We've also gotten people divorced. But it's, <laughs> but, it is what it is. But, but it covers everything, you know, that is, we're, we're there for each other, for each other. But yes. the most important thing that I saw was that there is no real voice for the sisters. It's the brothers that want to talk about his job. It's the brothers that want to talk about being patient during marriage. It's the brothers yeah. telling you how to dress and da 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 da. We don't need you guys to tell us anything. I mean, alhamdulillah, yeah. you're the leaders. We understand da 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 da. But I don't want our sisters to only think Islam is what this particular man tells you. Yes. Right. Yes. It's, yes. It's very important to find out for yourself and yes. learn your rights, learn rights that yes. others have upon you and things like that. And that was the big purpose of it. So And that's the best thing about this group. And I like to say that because you know, when you're dealing with Muslims from around the world, it's more than um just wearing black mm -hmm. it's so many beautiful co colors i mean even even our beloved aisha Radia, 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 and, uh -huh. and who mm -hmm. i get tongue tied but it, she her favorite color was like saffron like a orangey ready yeah. saffron you know yeah. and it, and if you really think about it like i used to watch usman in ertzgo when they crushed them berries and did all that, you saw them coming out with those vibrant greens, oh. orange, red. Did you really see a lot of black? Right. No. And it was slowly. <laughs> it was like looking at, like when you were a little girl as a revert, I yes. remember saying to my daughter one day, I noticed, when did we stop looking at princesses and realizing that as Muslims, we're princesses. We right. walk around yes. with Every our crown every day that's right I, I, let me yeah. tell you i feel like royalty every yeah. day i mean i dress yeah. up i mean we're coming out when we go out i mean yeah. to wear even the hijab it's a it's it's a step above the regular mundane yeah mm -hmm. so alhamdulillah it's been going well we've been doing a lot of things with the fajr readings in the morning um, trying to get that out of there. And all of that was to get to this point that we are right here, which is yes, celebrating each other and and bringing it to the world. And inshallah, we'll be able to yes. continue this because I am so yes. excited about it. And I thank you guys. Thank you for being a part of it because I'm excited. Uh -huh. I see the excitement that you guys have too. So alhamdulillah. Yes. Yeah. Cause I believe we need this. Um, I I wish we would have started this like in April and you know March, April, May or whatever. Um, a couple of sisters, you know, may have been feeling alone during this isolation isolation of the COVID mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. I myself um, personally went through some emotional highs and lows with this and if it was not from the strength of my companion and, and my husband, I think I would have just been upside down on the ceiling. Mm. So that's how crazy I felt like I was going to get. But alhamdulillah, all things Nakab is, is truly a blessing. And I pray that it keeps being a blessing to sisters and that we offer the best support and information we can ever, you know, 
offer to another sister in need or just searching for the, you know, searching for the truth. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Well, just Jazakallah Ed for joining us and, and giving us the background. I know you've got to get back to work. So yes. thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Alhamdulillah. And um, we will see you soon. But before she goes, I want to tell everybody that this segment is brought to you by A to Z Sterilization and Cleaning. Others may clean, but we sterilize. We specialize in reducing the microorganisms in your home. Call us today at 407-955-1288 or visit us at sterilizemyhome.com. We'll be right back, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>